Good evening, everybody. Just wanted to take a couple minutes uh, and come and talk to you about the Energy Express program. Uh, I did put together this little bit of information uh, for you. For the last couple of years, WVU Extension has ran the Energy Express program. And like I said, for the last, I know, probably four years, uh, they've just had the site at Hamlin um, as far as coming through Extension. And for last year, I did put together, had a little bit of just numbers. Uh, the first page is statewide, some of um, what Energy Express is doing, just in case uh, you may not be familiar looking at across the state, 78 sites in 38 counties. Uh, it did break down you know, how many meals were served to youth, how many college students uh, was employed kind of through the program. On the next page is actually Lincoln County uh, statistics. That's uh, what we was looking at at the Hamlin site. Uh, I had planned for to have 40 students at the site last year. We ended up uh, having 30 that met the requirement of that they were there half the time. That's what they have. The, the student has to attend at least half the days to be counted uh, in our numbers. So we did have 30 that uh, maintained or met the 50% attendance. Then it just breaks down, like I said, each week what we was looking. Um, week three, that was that was the storm, so that kind of knocked our numbers down a little bit. But it breaks down and shows the average, what we're looking at, uh, who's coming. The, um, you know, the next page just breaks down some of the volunteer hours. You know, a big part of Energy Express is bringing the community in, having them involved, working with our um, students, and that kind of shows um, the number of hours total uh, total volunteer hours 139 at the site last year uh, not to you know flip back and forth uh, it doesn't go in specifically on the um, the student performance but if you look on the front page again when it's one of the things uh, that energy express really likes to kind of promote and show as with any summer reading program um, the third starred item uh, was the increase in letter word identification and showing that you know on average or the average increase was 3.1 months and the way they gauge that the first two days of the program and the last two days of the program uh, we give each child an assessment, a uh, Woodcock Johnson uh, assessment, shows where they are when we start, and then on the last day of the program, and that's kind of uh, for that period of time. And it is, it's a 28-day program. Uh, that's what we're looking at having the students over the summer. Um, last year, I kind of was handed the Energy Express program, um, so, it was my first, I guess, rodeo on the extension side of things and running the Energy Express. And, uh, uh, so that's, I just want to come and talk to you a little bit about how that went. I heard a little bit uh, from the community uh, interest in looking at other sites. Uh, last year we did actually plan for two sites. We planned at Hamlin and we also planned at Duval. Um, as we tried to get our site coordinators we didn't have any applications for the Duval site. Uh, we had a couple of Hamlin when I talked to them to see if they were interested in being considered. Um, they really wasn't at that time, so we stepped away from the Duval site last year. And that's why we just had the one at Hamlin. Uh, this year, I had heard some, uh, like I said, just in the community interest in uh, uh, going through West Hamlin and um, to the Hearts area uh, that it had. They had had Energy Express in the past to the Tarts. Um, I happened to speak with the principals, uh, Mr. Davis and Mr. King at West Hamlin was interested. Uh, Ms. Dingus was interested at uh, Hearts, although was cautiously interested. When they had had the program before, there was some concerns 
with being able to get mentors, which is our college students that works with the children, uh, having enough mentors to fill the positions. Uh, so, you know, that, that's kind of what I was looking at is possibility of three sites. Um, if you look, I did include those sites, actually behind the county specific data. The next one is all of the sites in West Virginia. I, I, I apologize. Uh, that's the county and each one of the sites. There was a question uh, as far as how, where were the sites held, and that's the location. The next page is the uh, proposed 2013 uh, site budget for Hamlin Pre-K-8. And the way it comes, uh, the way they come up with this, uh, if you look at the top, it does say number of mentors, and that's the number of classrooms plus a community coordinator. So like at Hamlin, I'd be looking at six. That'd be five classrooms, which is what we had last year, five classrooms. Uh, that's, again, planning for 40 students. And then the way the spreadsheet is developed, the total cost is, if you look down below, it says total energy express cost. At the bottom of that column says $28,466. That's how much it would cost to run, or they propose, their projections for running the program. Um, the state office, uh, through a grant that Extension has, uh, working with the AmeriCorps programs, they provide 70% of the cost, so the state would pay uh, $19,791 for the Hamlin site, leaving local funding of $8,675. That's just for the Hamlin site. Uh, as it's talking about local funding, that's, you know, any funding that I have in budget, looking for grants, donations, and of course partnership and, and with the school uh, to, to come to bring, to meet that uh, amount of 30%. And if you see, they actually break it down and that shows we're at 30.4% with this proposed budget. Um, it doesn't matter how we would want to, where we'd want to put the numbers, like at the Hamlin site, I put uh, $6,000 to go toward transportation. Um, if we got $6,000 locally somewhere else, then the state would send the Board of Education if that was who was doing our transportation, that money. If you, if you look over at the next site, um, is West Hamlin. And one, one of the other reasons I was looking at West Hamlin and Hearts uh, throughout the state and in many other, the other counties, there is a very strong uh, connection with Title I and the reading and the reading program through Energy Express. So a lot of areas have used that uh, and it is an allowable expense to pay for the site supervisor salary and the books that we give the children to take home. Uh, so, like at the West Hamlin site, and again, these are just proposed, but looking at the same numbers, uh, 40 students, and we would need uh, the same amount of money to run the site, but was able to move some of the numbers around. The site supervisor salary of $4,750, I mean, which could be, uh, and again, just proposed with inter uh, Title I funds, was able to be used uh, to pay that part. Then, like in this instance, uh, the state uh, would be able to give the Board of Education 6000 They would pay $6,000 for transportation. So that's Hamlin and West Hamlin. Again, the next page is Hearts Pre-K with some of the concern of um, attendance and mentors. I did just look at having four classrooms there, if that's even approved uh, as a site. Uh, but that brings it down to only, that's why there's 32 children instead of 40. And the overall cost is a little less because we're looking at less children. 
Uh, one other, uh, the, the next page and the final page, uh, possibility would be if we was able to combine the uh, Hamlin and West Hamlin sites at a more central location uh, for one site and possibly uh, Lincoln County High School. Then being able to pull those two uh, uh, like programs together would look at only having one site coordinator, so I mean the cost, overall cost would be significantly less than having the two sites. Um, you know, total local funding for those two sites would earn, like at Lincoln County High School, that would be having eight mentors serving 64 children, um, $11,065. Uh, I know that was probably a lot of uh, information thrown. I mean, I, uh, but, you know, <coughs> the Energy Express uh, and Extension, they'll make their announcements in um, end of January. I believe they told me today the 25th. I looked at that on a notepad. I apologize, I didn't make it with me, but I believe it's January 25th is when they make their announcement of their sites. Um, I have tentative, put tentative uh, proposals in for the three sites, so they are, you know, kind of considering them, but as, you know, up until the 25th, any of those can be pulled, changed, corrected. Uh, so just kind of hard. So some of this has already been submitted? Yes. They run us on one county high school, so this is only an option if, if West Hamlin and Hamlin right, combine. To combine West Hamlin and Hamlin, right. That now, be. is there a reason? Is it due? Why isn't we? Why are we planning on what to do? Laws that get back to the problems you had getting the <coughs> staff last year. Well, um, I, and would be interested to actually uh, talk with uh, you know Miss Clayton again. I, the application got up on the door too quick this year. Well, uh, I was just thinking, you know, we were hitting the other areas of right. excuse me, but we're not getting over in that area. But right. I just thought it wondered if there was you know, particular reason. Well, uh, like I said, I know just last year when we had the site, and of course it was, like I said, just at Hamlin, and, and I had heard some interest uh, uh, essentially coming up the river of trying to come back to that area. Um, and that's, you know, like I said, it, it, it gets a little earlier every year that they want the initial applications in. I mean, it would, it would well, I like, you know, I'm sure most of us do. I like the idea of expanding the program <laughs> as much county-wide as we can. That's right. why I just, we right. include do on there, too. Uh, you know, and, and, and site-wise, uh, you know, uh, uh, McCorkle uh, would like to have, or uh, Midway uh, would like to, you know, be able to put something in that area also because there's, uh, you know, it's not really, you have a pretty good catchment area, easy access. Uh, so. David, I, I have one question uh -huh. uh, for clarification. Okay. When I look at what the um, amount that the extension uh, agency would be contributing. Which one are we at? Uh, I'm sorry. Transportation is that six thousand dollars per site, or is that six thousand dollars total? Each one of these <coughs> budgets are per site. Okay, uh, but I, I noticed in for the West Hamlin in the transportation, it's zero. Right, and that's the local funding. Um, when we're saying local funding, and that's that's extension, um, the county commission, uh, board of education, any donations. So, so you're not asking for transportation money from local, from us? Not from money. We still provide the service, and then, like the West Hamlin's case, uh, our state office would cut a check to the Lincoln County Board of Education for six thousand dollars for each site. Well, for West Hamlin site. Because, like, if you're looking at West Hamlin, That's what I'm trying to the, the key is for each site, you have to get 30% match. So, in this line, 
has to be 30% of your total cost. Um, at West Hamlin, we was able to get that 30% just as an example using Title I funds. That's proposed. Exactly. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. all proposed. Uh -huh. uh, but just as an example, so that got our contribution, the local contribution, up. Uh, so there, it's still six thousand dollars is what it would, what they're looking at paying or needing for transportation. In this instance, the state office would pay that six thousand dollars to whoever provides transportation, but it just makes the most sense if we can for, the board, for that to be the Board of Education. Whereas the difference with Hamlin, our 30% would be pretty mostly spent on, because that's just the biggest amount for one funding source would be on the transportation. And you know, on the Hamlin site, then the state office would pay all of the site salary or site supervisor salary. I mean, so kind of like a shell game, but uh, kind of with money. As long as the key is getting that 30%, however we can uh, show a 30% contribution locally. <laughs> and like I said, I, I do have some money, in, you know, my operating budget comes, uh, well, of course, you know, the extensive part of it comes to the Board of Education, part of it comes to the County Commission. We do have some dollars uh, earmarked to the Commission for Energy Express. So that's, that's where we get some part of it. There's also a couple grants, but as we know, those aren't, it's kind of iffy if those are going to try for it. Do I have anything else? Just if if you guys, if we do all three sites, it's basically around thirty thousand dollars of local funding that we're master. Right. Carol, do you have any questions? No, I don't think. So uh, I think Chris pointed out there is that you know, that thirty percent that we have to make it could be in any number of places. Any That's what you just <coughs> right. Any numbers. number of places. Exactly. Um, Can you just describe for us briefly? The, a typical day, what the, what, you know, when we start, what we do, when we leave? Um, <coughs> the students arrive at uh, 8.30, typically they'll come in for breakfast. Uh, they're dismissed the rooms after, uh, you know, whatever, whatever they're provided. Each of the mentors uh, have a maximum of eight students in their classroom. Uh, there's some reading activities. Uh, each week has a different theme, my family, myself, my community. Uh, we look at books that mirror those uh, themes, uh, different activities. Uh, there's a lot of uh, art and creativity. They're, they're not allowed to use any pre-made items. Everything is kind of found and, and they have to really build and, and uh, whatever they're you know, making or the theme is that week. Uh, they have a period of time that they come out of the classrooms um, and gather. Uh, they have a lot of non-competitive sports, um, so they are getting their you know physical activity. So much time, I believe it's uh, 40 minutes of physical activity, and there are some different games that we work with the mentors. Uh, so everybody gets moving, but not you know, competitive. So they don't. Everybody feels good at the end of the day. Uh, they go to lunch. Uh, around 11:30, after lunch, they're dismissed uh, to go. So I mean, it, it's it, it's not a, it's kind of a half of a school day, but it's pretty uh, uh, packed with activity. Uh, so we'll go back in. Uh, to get two meals in the process. Two meals in the process, and the um, and then after they leave, the the mentors and the community coordinator stay for another, I believe it's hour and a half and they'll work on, one, getting their room back in order and ready for the next day, but then they're also required to do community service projects. Oftentimes they do blood drives, uh, they do canned food, canned food drives, and that's uh, some of the, the volunteer hours you see. Uh, what it was talking about, they'll bring people in the, from the community in to uh, read um, to the children, 
uh, or to help out, like I said, with the, with the canned food, and that was a big one last year. Good. Anything else you want? All right, David. Good luck to you. I appreciate it. All and <laughs> if I could, while I was here, just one other thing Extension is doing, uh, just to, to, to let you know, uh, and I work in the families and health unit, so it's a lot about healthy lifestyles, and I have spoke with, oh, it's, you already left, uh, Mr. Snyder, uh, but we're going to be implementing some walking programs at the high school, uh, and opening up the school we did last year on one day a week, real successful uh, through the you know, it's people from the courthouse, uh, the women's club, developed a couple of different walking groups that was coming, so he, he and I talked, he was interested in bringing that back at high school this year, so just wanted to throw that out there. When we get it going, come over and walk with us. So, thank you. Thank, thank you, David.